Hello and welcome to another TLDR EU video. Crisis is a word that's bandied around a lot when it comes to politics, but the past few weeks in Italy have more than deserved the name. In a matter of weeks, we've had a coalition collapse, a resignation, failed negotiations, and then a new technocratic prime minister. Which begs the question, what the hell is happening in Italy? So in this video, we'll attempt to answer just that looking into exactly what's just happened, and why it's been necessary to deploy whatever it takes and call on Super Mario to fix this mess. If you want to support our independent reporting in an increasingly difficult time, one where journalism's dictated by clicks and algorithms rather than important stories, then consider backing us on Patreon. In return, you'll get a whole bunch of perks, including exclusive access to live events, early access to videos, and thanks in videos. Also, this month only, every $10 plus Patreon backer gets an exclusive gold pin badge. These will never be available for sale, so make sure you sign up to get yourself an exclusive badge. Thanks for your support. So, some backstory. This entire crisis came to the fore when Italy's ruling coalition collapsed. Italy's former Prime Minister Matteo Renzi pulled his party, Italia Viva, out of the coalition led by Giuseppe Conte, causing Conte to lose his majority support. The question is why? Politicians don't just pull out of coalitions when they feel like it. Well, the answer's money. As we've discussed at length on this channel now, the EU plans to spend billions of euros to kickstart the European economy, money that will invariably be divvied up to national governments for them to spend how they wish. The issue being, how exactly do national governments want to spend that vast, vast quantity of cash that's coming their way? Renzi wanted the 210 billion euros promised to Italy to be directed towards new infrastructure projects which was in direct opposition to Conti's desire for a panel of appointed experts to oversee and direct the spending of the funds. After weeks of threatening to withdraw over the issue, Renzi finally did so, in a move widely denounced by MPs and much of the Italian press, and a move which many believe was derived by a thirst for political power. A poll published in the immediate wake of Renzi's withdrawal from the coalition found that 46% of Italians didn't even understand the reason for the crisis, with 73% believing that Renzi was pursuing his own selfish political objectives rather than the interests of the country. The two largest parties in Italy's government were quick to throw their support behind Conti. Both the Five Star Movement and the Democratic Party publicly criticised Renzi's move and stated that they would continue to back Conti. The acting leader of Five Star stressed that in this moment of crisis, there can be no other thought than continuing to work for the good of the country and its citizens. A vote of confidence was subsequently called in Giuseppe Conti, a vote he easily won in the lower house, the Chamber of Deputies, where the remaining coalition parties still have a majority, but in the Senate he only won very narrowly, crucially without an absolute majority. Had the government survived, it would have been significantly weakened and unable to pass a budget, which requires an absolute majority in the Senate. In light of this, Conti promptly tendered his resignation to the president. This led the president scrambling, trying to decide what should happen next. Because with no forthcoming coalition of support coming out in favour of Conti, the next option would be to call an election. Not exactly the best idea in the middle of a pandemic. So to solve the issue, the president invited Mario Draghi to form a government. Now Mario Draghi has, to put it lightly, a bit of a reputation in the European Union. The former president of the European Central Bank during the European sovereign debt crisis is largely credited with saving the euro from complete destruction. With the Greek economy on the verge of collapse from international market pressure, pressure that was slowly but surely seeping into the likes of Italy, Portugal and Spain, Draghi pledged to do whatever it takes to preserve the euro, going on to add, believe me, it will be enough. These words alone are widely credited with immediately placating financial markets and reducing pressure on the countries. But while he has had some successes, Draghi isn't a politician. He never was. Draghi has never stood for political election, having been the governor of the Bank of Italy before moving on to the presidency of the European Central Bank. In the words of the FT, Draghi is set to be thrust into the cauldron of Italian daily politics, a vastly different arena from the polished and market-focused world of central banking. 
But Italy's president didn't shy away from the fact that it was a technocratic appointment. He called on Italian lawmakers to back a government of high profile, which should not identify with any political formula in the light of the crisis. This, crucially, isn't the first time that Italy's called on non-political outsiders to come and fix things. Rather, it's happened a few times now. In 1993, Carlo Azzeglio Chiampi, the former governor of the Bank of Italy, like Draghi, entered politics to balance things out through a volatile period before an election could be held. One that eventually would bring Silvio Berlusconi to power. In the height of the European sovereign debt crisis, Mario Monti, a former European commissioner, was brought in following the resignation of then Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi. Monti was ultimately responsible for enacting the structural and painful economic reforms demanded by the Commission, a move that invariably contributed to his downfall later down the line. So there's clearly some history of Italy calling in the technocrats when things get tricky and elections aren't easy. Then again, Giuseppe Conti, the current Prime Minister brought down in this crisis, was first appointed as a technocratic leader, although some are now arguing that he's turned into a truly political figure. The issue being that it's relatively uncontroversial to say that technocratic rule hasn't been plain sailing. In all instances, leaders unaware of the cauldron of Italian domestic politics have been brought in and had to adjust to domestic politics fix the situation they've been called into, while at the same time trying to get a coalition of support around them, and more importantly, to stay around them. Ultimately, whilst the leader may be a technocrat, they're not suddenly leading the parliament on their own. Rather, they have to adjust to and cater for the political winds and seasoned parliamentarians, whose support, were it to vanish, would spell the end of their time at the helm of Italian politics. And that's the issue likely to plague Draghi in the coming weeks and months. Support for Draghi isn't a foregone conclusion. Talking to Reuters, a senior party source for Italy's anti-establishment five-star movement, indicated that they wouldn't be backing a government led by Draghi. On Saturday, however, the five-star movement changed their position, with their acting leader telling reporters that after a meeting with Draghi, we're open to considering whether the conditions are right to join a government. We will decide above all on the basis of the policies. A marked shift from the earlier outright rejections. The League have also backtracked. Having first called for snap elections, it expressed conditional backing, with its leader stating that it would be prepared to join so long as it was a government that goes to Brussels keeping its head high in the name of national interest. Renzi's Italia Viva party, as well as Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia party, have all already indicated their support. So there's clearly some growing support for Draghi. In the words of the FT, the danger for Mr Draghi is that his premiership proves to be a poison chalice. As an unelected technocrat in an age of populism and lacking a party base of his own, Mr Draghi will be vulnerable to sniping that his policies are not the expression of political will. Draghi, assuming that he's able to garner a fully-fledged coalition of support, will have the formidable task of redesigning Italy's recovery plan. A plan worth in excess of 200 billion euros, the largest sum in absolute terms for any EU country. In a statement, Draghi emphasised that the challenges that Italy now faced were substantial. Beating the pandemic, completing the vaccination campaign, offering answers to everyday challenges and getting the country back on track. Matteo Renzi told the BBC's NewsHour that Draghi was the Italian who saved Europe. I think he is now the European who can save Italy. What do you think, though? Is appointing a technocrat, again, a route to solving political disputes in Italy? Or is this all about to cause another crisis further down the line? Ultimately, is Super Mario the European who can save Italy? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.